Meta. Today I'm going to be doing companies and this is um, just paper two. I will start by discussing everything about the Companies Act. So we'll be doing Companies Act of 2008 and what the aim of the Act aims to do is to provide for incorporation, registration, organization, and management of companies, how a company shall be managed, organized, registered, or started. And it defines the relationship between the company and their respective shareholders or members of directors. And the question that I love asking my student is to my students is to tell me what the difference is between a shareholder and a director. A shareholder bought shares in a company, ultimately providing capital to the company. And they appoint directors to be the arms, the ears, the hands, the mouth for the company and the brains for the company. Note that a company is legally, it is a separate person from the shareholder. So that means um, a company will be 21. If it was possible, it'll have a driver's license. It'll buy goods, it'll buy property. It'll enter into contracts, sue and be sued as well. And note that you as a shareholder, you are basically giving someone control over the company that you started. And you have no say. Well, you have a little say on how the company is run. It will be run by the directors that you appoint because you need to trust your judgment that they do have the capabilities and characteristics you require for them to run the company. They need to generate their sole duty is to ensure that the company generates money so that you as a shareholder can get the return of your, on your investment, which will be in the form of dividends. Now, um, and this is what I like telling my kids, as a director of the company, you need to act in the best interest of the company, nothing else. And your primary goal must be to generate as much profits as possible for the company. That is your ultimate goal only goal is a director. Unfortunately, directors sometimes get involved in wrong things like corruption or scandals that will taint the image of the company that could result in the company going down. Look at Steinhoff. Before you can um, start with this section, what I normally do from grade eight, grade nine already, I, I actually ask my learners to watch this series. It's sort of like a documentary it is called Stein Heist. You'll find it on um, which digital platform you can find? I think it's Showmax. I once saw it somewhere. Um, was it on Netflix? No, it wasn't on Netflix. Was it on Netflix? I'm not sure. Or was it on DS? Or I watched it on DSTV, Channel 115 at some point, but we don't have Channel 115 anymore. And they tell an interesting story. And you might think that is a fake story, but that is a real story and it just happened. And I read today that SARS just got 6.1 million or billion, I don't remember, from Marcus Houston. And uh, I think there was tax shenanigans that they were doing as well. They, it was just corruption at its core. And all of these um, as to the role of a director and what you need to do as a director. I always say that um, series gives a clear picture of what is all about co corporate governance and the company's act. And I think before he died, he was already declared a delinquent director, meaning that he can never be a director again. Same with Dudumi and he was in charge of SAA. And all of these are stated in the company's act, by the way. So the Companies Act also provides equitable and efficient am amalgamation measures and takeovers of companies. The only takeover or major that, uh, that was recently rejected, I don't know if it was rejected by SARS 
or um, or the Department of Trade and Industry was when uh, um, this is a diamond mining company. Um, all I'm thinking all American now. Uh, what do they call that company? Trying to remember it. The Oppenheimer family runs that company. Um, Goldfields or something like that. Um, uh, it's gone. I forgot the name of the company, but it was it was supposed to have been bought by another company and taken over by another company from I think it's from the UK. And their first primary goal was to ensure that the company is taken out of South Africa. So South African operations are, are stopped. Is it Coldfields? Well, the company that is owned by the Oppenheimer, so Ramaphosa also had shares there, if I'm not mistaken. It's something about American, 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 American. I forgot about it. Okay. So, so that's why I'm saying that um, it could have also violated the companies act discouraging competition and also discouraging well encouraging disinvestment in the country and probably that's why that's why i'm saying companies echo provide rules as to which company amalgamate the means you can bring them together um i'm trying to think of any company that was amalgamated i know APSA was amalgamated I think that's why it's called APSA Amalgamated Bank of South Africa. It was a bank between United, is it, was it United Bank? And I don't remember which other bank um, because I was still young. It was around, um, well, around 14, United Bank. That is 2001. Um, 2001, was it 2001? Yeah. yeah, it's 2001. I was in grade eight, I think. Um, we we were banking. We, me and my mom were banking with United Bank, but I don't remember when it was, or was I younger when we still had United Bank? I don't remember, but it was amalgamated with another bank to form Absa Bank. So Absa Bank is a combination of different banks that were amalgamated, brought together, and they became one. Okay. Um, sometimes a takeover can be a hostile takeover because the company is going down and it's it's about to be liquidated. Um, there was a company like that in South Africa. Um, I think it's SAA, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah. Um, when I tell my kids about these stories, they think I'm deviating from accounting, but they're very, very important. I'm just summarizing um, the companies act notes and ultimately when this comes in out in the event like yeah but so we didn't do it and I'm like no we did it it's just that I was explaining it using real examples um, and um, yeah this is um, you can tell that I'm just taking examples real life examples and I'm giving you examples of why it's important to have the companies act it also provides appropriate legal remedies and um, redress for investors and third parties with respect to companies. Um, I know there are companies that were sued due to violating environmental laws like BW, I think it was sued and it had to pay millions of penalties in America. And I think Sasol as well, that claims that it can be sued, I'm not sure about that. And apologies if that one, I'm not sure, I can't guarantee that, but I know about uh, BW with the emission scandal um and recently though there has been banks have been under attack by charging black customers more interest and refusing to give them loans um yeah, i don't know where that ended up and and i don't know how how companies act uh, took appropriate legal redress for investors and third parties in this case, okay? Um, another one is when the Steinhoff went down because of Marcus Jeter was involved in corruption scandals and so on. The the investors like the the, the owner, uh, the shareholder of ShowPride, the guy that founded ShowPride, um, Christopher Vise, or I don't know how to pronounce his surname. They, they wanted their money back and they were trying to sue Marcus Jeter. Unfortunately, he passed away. 
so basically it also allows you because you know what the duties of a director are if they don't abide by those duties a companies act guided by the companies act you can take legal actions and actually do whatever it takes to get your money back it establishes it helps you or the aim is to um, establish companies intellectual property commission it's simple it's where you if you want to register your company go to that website i heard that it's for free now you just register online and the takeover regulation panel to administer the requirements of the companies with respect to companies etc let's continue so categories of companies that we've got we've got two types of companies that can be formed and incorporated under the companies act it could be a profit company and a non-profit company or ng i mean npo and with a profit company, a company is incorporated with the sole purpose for financial gain to its shareholders. A non-profit company is incorporated for a public benefit like schools and benefit income and property of which is not distributable to its incorporators, members, directors, or officers. It's just like schools. I think our school falls under that category where the remaining, the retained profits can be given to the incorporators, members, directors, or offices. But instead, it can only be used or to reinvest into the company while buying investment or, in, well, assets, so of to say. Um, and under profit companies, we've got your state-owned companies. These will be your ESCOM, it will be your transnet it will be your post office which is going down it will be your um trying to think of any other company um is it dell the the, the one that was making army stuff i forgot what they call that company it was also a state-owned company all of them unfortunately are going down due to corruption and mis mismanagement of funds now those will be owned by the state and will be within the terms of public finance management act a private company though it's its memorandum prohibits it from issuing or offering shares to the public and it restricts the transferability of its securities proprietary there is limited proprietary ownership is also limited to certain people so you decide who you want to sell your shares Two that is under a private company, a personal liability company, is memorandum so state that a company is a personal liability company, meaning that a company and the owner are considered to be one person. So if the company gets into debt, the company it's debt, it's being sued. We're actually suing the owner because there's no separation between the owner and the company legally. That is, and the owner will be liable for any debt or any. Um, negative things that will come towards the company. Um, the last company that we will talk about is a public company where it allows you to issue shares to anybody, anybody, okay, anybody. So there you are able to raise more capital because your uh, capital sources are, are bigger because you have a bigger pool um, where you can get or invite people to be part of your company by buying shares and you get the money and they get shares. What else with a private company, it's a bit smaller. It restricts you to a limited number of people. That is the only disadvantage between a public company and a private company in most cases. So um, expansion under a private company is restricted. And I need to state this, guys. When they say a company is a public company, it does not mean that it is owned by the state. It means that the transferability of shares, we can sell its shares to anybody and a lot of people. Therefore, they will need to raise more capital if there's a need. You got it? We good? Let's go. What's the difference between a public company and a private company? As I said, with a public company, its name ends with um limited limited means the liabilities of the company are limited to the company so whatever does the company has entered into um to get your money back you'll just sell the assets of the company the shareholders are unaffected 
And um, so that's why they call it limited public company limited private company though. Um, obviously it's also limited, but proprietary ownership is also limited. So it means that by that, it means that you can choose who you want to be a shareholder and whatever the company suffers, suffers it can be sued or whatever. It, it can only affect the company. It doesn't really affect its founders or shareholders. Now, when it comes to the transferability of shares, a public company can easily transfer its shares or sell its shares to the public whilst under a private company, it is limited there. So the transfer of shares or securities is limited. It cannot issue shares to the public. It can only select who it wants to be a shareholder. Now, the name I've also discussed it under a public company. We have limited private company. Its property is limited, PTYLTD. When it comes to the board, the directors and prescribed officers, at least one direct, three directors are required under a public company. At least means it's three and more. And under a private company, you just need one or more directors. When it comes to audit requirements, I know that a public company must just be audited to protect. People don't understand that there is to protect the company. Audit is required to protect the company to ensure that the person that is the eyes, the ears, the brains of the company doesn't take the company for granted, okay? So we need financial statements to be audited. So all public companies must be audited. It is compulsory for them to be audited. When it comes to a private company, it needs to meet a certain public score, okay? Um, I forgot what it was. Guys, I did my third year a while back. Um, we normally do this under auditing. And then, but I would encourage all companies, encourage that all companies, private companies be audited to ensure that the directors are actually running the company in the best interest of the company, not in their own personal interest. Okay. Um, I have to go for now. Next time I will be talking about the formation and administration of companies, and we'll talk about the criteria for names of companies. For now, all I can say is also, please check out the next video for more.